Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to episode 302 of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I'm Jimbo, your host, with a couple cool announcements. Uh, the first announcement being Auto Fiber, the sponsor of the show for the past few months, is going to have a booth at SEMA this year, which is coming up quickly um, <clears throat> in about just over a month. They are going to be booth 50541. 50541 uh, in the P- Performance Pavilion. Um, and I'm actually going to be hanging out for a while. I'm going to make that Auto Fibers booth kind of my main hub at SEMA and then kind of branch out from there, but always kind of come back to that. So if you want to hang out, maybe record a podcast episode at SEMA. Booth 50541 is where I will be hanging out a lot of the time. <clears throat> Don't have any set times there. Um, but yeah, another thing is this product is just launching through auto fiber i'm actually not sure i'm trying to confirm up with ian right now if they're available but you'll have to check the auto fiber site and it's these little like finger applicators or the finger sleeves that are applicators they're microfiber applicators but they're brilliant for products like solution finish and trim uh trim restores they come in black and gray they slip right over your finger almost kind of looks like a windscreen for a microphone um which i thought about trying for a mic but uh you can check out autofiber.com see if those are on the site um and use offer code jimbo and you can get 20 percent off of those and hopefully i'll see some of you guys at sema all right, this week on the show, kind of a cool thing I'm going to be doing is a while back, I recorded a 12-module course um, all on different aspects of detailing and starting the detailing business. And today, I'm going to, I'm actually going to bring all that into the detailer inner circle. So what this is going to enable you to do by listening to the podcast, you can kind of get a taste of what the detailer inner circle or like one aspect of the detailer inner circle um, is is like. So I'm going to play these two separate audio trainings um, that I've previously recorded. Again, that I'm going to bring into the detailer inner circle, but you guys get to listen to them here first. So the first one is all about training. Should you do training? Should you not do training? Should you fake it till you make it? Um, And then the second one is going to be should you start a fixed location or should you do a mobile setup? So pros and cons, again, training, that could be for the professional or the consumer. Um, And then obviously, if you're thinking about starting a business, should you start with a fixed location or a mobile location? So these are two back-to-back trainings. um, And again, a quick sample of what you will get inside the detailer inner circle. Um, If you want more information on the detailer inner circle, of course, you can message me or check out detailerinnercircle.com. Hope you guys enjoy these. Welcome to lesson number seven of start and grow a profitable detailing business. Ah, We're going to be talking about training, my favorite. Well, one of my favorite topics. Actually, all these lessons have been my favorite. And the big question I get a lot is, hey, Jimbo, should I take training or should I just fake it until I make it? So let's talk about the truth about training, okay? Because you're essentially in a training course right now, right? So knowledge is power. What we've talked about in previous lessons is that you should never stop learning. And especially when it comes to business knowledge and sales knowledge and business acumen, you really need to always be a student of the game. That's the trick. That's the, the how you're going to be successful. That's how you're going to always remain profitable as well as training to become a better detailer. So knowledge is power and the biggest benefit towards training is that it can shave years off your learning. As we talked about in a previous episode, um, you know, sometimes you have more money than you do time. In that case, training would be ideal for you because you're short on time. So you spend money to essentially buy time to learn things quicker. And sometimes you have more time than money. So you're short on funds, but you have more time that you could put in the sweat equity and you can afford to waste a little bit of time to train yourself. So in a previous lesson, I I used the example of me with the digital marketing agency and I could hire someone to do it and it would be super expensive or I could 
train or, or use time and sweat equity and teach myself and trial and error and prayer. And it would take me longer, but I would still, at the end of the day, at the end of the year, you're probably going to get to the same result, pick up a couple of tips and tricks, but honestly, there's nothing new under the sun. So you're probably going to get to the end result. You're probably going to get to the same end result. It's just a matter of how much time it's going to take you to get to that result. And honestly, you could probably, you're going to learn something from someone who's been in the industry longer than you have. So just like this training course, you're taking this training course because you want to start and grow a profitable detailing business. Sure, anyone can go out there and start a detailing business, but can they start a profitable one and can they grow it beyond three clients on Saturday and Sunday? That's the trick. So I'm not in this training course. I'm not saying this is the end all be all training course because I'm still learning. I'm I'm learning by teaching you guys. In fact, I think that's how I learn best. So what I suggest is, um, sorry about that. I'm going to turn that volume down a little bit. So I suggest training because it could shave years off your learning. So though going back to my social media marketing uh, guy that I was going to hire, I was going to hire him and hiring him, I would have shaved off months. But what I did instead was I bought a course to teach me how to do it. And then that was supposed to be a four month course that I finished in about a week and a half. Um, so now I taught myself how to do it, but I'm continually learning how to grow and run a profitable detailing business, and you need to too. So you can succeed much faster and better with training. Training and ongoing learning doesn't have to be done hands-on, but through books, podcasts, conferences, SEMA show, online tutorials like this. Um, so I think there's going to be a strong movement away from hand-to-hand -hand training only because um, it costs so much money for people to fly out somewhere, stay in a hotel for a week, and pay the training fees on top of that, plus food. Oh, I mean, all that. You're looking at significant, uh, you know, you're looking at thousands upon thousands of dollars to get proper training, whereas you can do something like this online course for a fraction of the cost and still get valuable content, and you can sit in your underwear and listen to me just like I'm sitting in my underwear teaching you. Just kidding. I'm not sitting in my underwear at all. Um, I am fully clothed. Um, so I, this is the truth about training. Knowledge is power. Proper training can shave years off your learning. The problem is that you need to make sure that you're getting trained by the proper person for what you're trying to do. That is huge. So research, research, research. Luckily for us living in this modern age of detailing, we have information overload and information available at our fingertips so that um, you can really research the person and trust that whatever trainer you're going to um, whatever trainer you're going to be entrusting with your money to teach you um, is right for you through what what the other stuff they've been doing online. So, uh, this goes way beyond how to detail a car and into the, all the different aspects of running and growing a professional detailing business. Um, as I talked about in a previous lesson, I would venture to say that learning how to run a business and be a salesperson is much, much, much more important than how to detail a car. Uh, again, you need to know how to detail a car. That is the skill set that you're after. But the chances are you already know how to do that. So here's my thing. Why are you going to go spend, I talked to a guy the other day, he was, gonna, he was looking at taking a class on interior detailing. So he was, he owns his own business, runs his own business, is successful at running his own business, but was actually looking at going and taking a training class on how to do interior detailing. Now, lucky for him, the school he called didn't yet offer interior only training. Okay. But he was going to travel. He was going to spend money, spend a day down at this training facility to do an interior only hands-on training. Lucky for him, they didn't offer it. He texted me a picture a few days later of him doing an interior detail where he had pulled out all the seats out of the car and he said, hey, I've, I'm doing this level of interior detailing. Do you really think I need training? And I said, are you kidding me? You're already doing it, man. You don't need to go pay someone 600 bucks to teach them how to detail the interior of a car. You're already ripping seats out of a car and detailing it. <laughs> so maybe what he needed 
was more business acumen on on actually what he needs is just more confidence and that just comes with time because obviously he's a well enough business owner that he was able to sell that job and be profitable with it but he definitely didn't need to go take more training um but I would say learning to be a better salesperson is more important than how to actually detail a car. Anyone, as you know, can say they're a detailer. Um, but you must be a great salesperson to succeed. Um, being extremely knowledgeable in all things detailing, new products, new techniques, and everything um, that is coming on the scene, trade publication, shows like SEMA, it has never been easier, guys, to uh, train yourself. So it, it train yourself and network. Guys like myself are putting out a ton of free, valuable content. I'm not the only one that you should be following in the detailing space putting out really good content. Honestly, there's, there's a ton of guys putting out really, really high quality, valuable content for free that you should also be following. And I'm not going to name anyone here, but come on, quick Google search. And, and how about follow the people that I've had on the podcast? That, that'll that be a good one. But also get to the shows, hang out with the top detailers in the industry, you know, get a sneak peek at what, what the top industry companies are going to be releasing that next year. If you can get to SEMA even for a day. So the SEMA show is held in Vegas once a year. There's a there's a decent size uh, detailing section at SEMA. If you can get there, that's huge because you will not believe how accessible these top guys that you mainly only see on the internet actually are. They're standing right there. Mike Phillips, boom, right in the Auto Geek booth, right there. Jimbo Balaam, host of the Auto Detailing Podcast. <laughs> just kidding. But honestly, I'm just cruising around SEMA. And anyone that wants to meet up, I meet up with them. So the ex the accessibility of these top influencers that you mainly only see online is incredible. The barrier to see them is very, 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 very little. At shows like this, gives you a chance to really engage with them, interact with them, Um and the companies are also releasing what products, or they're showcasing what products they're going to be releasing uh, that next year. And they usually have, uh, you can do a little hand-to-hand -hand combat with those new products. So just getting to the SEMA show is training. You're training yourself. That is a perfect example of how to continue your education in training just by going to one show. Not to mention all the additional free resources online, paid courses like the one that you're watching and listening to now. Um, just because we live in this modern world, it is amazing the amount of training that you can really, really do. Um, so get to the shows. Hands-on deta detailing training can be great, but there are quote-unquote schools out there that have left more people feeling ripped off than accomplished. So again, I've heard about these. I'm not going to bash any school out there. I'm just not going to do that um, because they're probably learning as well. But I, I've just had people invest thousands of dollars to go to these schools. And whether it's a one-day training, whether it's a seven-day training, whether it's a 14-day training, whatever it is, I've had guys spend thousands upon thousands of dollars going to these schools only to come out to be like, I knew more than the trainer. And that is such a bummer. And that's why I try to put out quality, affordable information. Um, I probably over deliver a little bit and I'm 100% fine with that because I would never want someone to go through one of my trainings and say, man, I knew more than Jimbo did. And because chances are you probably do, which is why I only stick to my lane and the stuff that I know very, very well. So my best advice, if you're looking at going to get hands-on training, one-to-one -one training, is do your due diligence. Do a bunch of training or do a bunch of uh, online research. Call the school. Talk to the trainer. Ask for testimonials. Call those people that... Um, Call the people that have gone through the training, not just the people that they have on the testimonial page, but actually try to research other guys that have gone through that training by Googling like, you know, uh, 
Jimbo Balaam training course reviews or whatever, you know, look, search out reviews on that training school. Um, cause most of these bigger schools and people that do training will have reviews. So, um, you could also search, um, this is an interesting one for some people in the industry. If you search, uh, the school name and then like rip off reports or something like that, or rip off or reviews, whatever, those search terms will be really good to get you to the nitty gritty of what that training school is all about. And maybe you'll see and save yourself thousands upon thousands of dollars. And I hope this advice alone saves you thousands of dollars, knowing that you don't necessarily need to go get hands-on training. All right. Detailing skills can be learned, but poor work ethic is hard to change. You need to have a solid work ethic to make your training work for you. So that's one thing to go. Okay, so you've you've done your due diligence. You've gone and researched the training. You've decided that's what you're going to do. That school's perfect for you. You're going to travel out. You're going to spend a week. You've got the money. All is good. Awesome. So you go get the training, but in order for that training to work for you, you have to work. So a prime example of this is I took a 40-hour one-on-one hands-on training in PDR, painless dent repair. The problem, the training was great. The problem was is that I didn't utilize enough of the training after the training was done. So I didn't practice enough, and so my skill set hasn't developed fully. That's not the trainer's fault. The training was good. He taught me everything he told me he was going to teach me. I, my work ethic in that field just isn't strong enough yet. I'll say yet. So I've also seen guys get too big of an ego and think that they know everything now and they slowly die because the industry eats them up. Again, the quotes that I've talked about in other lessons, we've been doing it this way forever, so we're going to continue to do it this way. That's one, um, you know, I've been in the industry 30 years. This is, I know everything. Again, you're going to die. That's a bad mindset to have. And if you're not growing, you're dying. So don't die. A couple people to follow online. You can have online mentors that put out a lot of free information. And these people that I have mentioned here are going to be sales, marketing, and business people. Um, Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, or Gary V, Seth Godin, Tony Robbins. You could also find local mentors at score.org if you want physical in-person mentors. But all these people mentioned have courses that you can buy online. They have a ton ton of free information that you never have to buy anything from them. Um, so I'd highly suggest you train, you check these guys out and maybe you want to get hands-on training and, and, uh, online mentors. Um, and I would highly suggest just continue your education all the time. Never stop. All right. Hope you guys got some value out of that training. Hopefully, if you're on the fence about training, that helps you out too. Main takeaway from training would be just do your due diligence and make sure you're going with a reputable trainer if you choose to go down that route. The next one is going to be what was lesson number five, and that is should you do start with a fixed location or a mobile setup? So I'm going to play that one for you guys now. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to lesson number five of start and grow a profitable detailing business. Ah, profit. Love that word. All right. Lesson number five, we're going to be talking about a question I get a ton. A fixed location. Do I start a fixed location shop or do I go mobile? What do I do? I'm conflicted. I'm not sure what to do. Let's get right into it. Here's what you want. (laughs) I love these quotes. So I love my job only when I'm on vacation. And see, this is so applicable because this is one of the main reasons why me personally, I've never gone to a fixed location. Because if we go back to lesson one, I think it was, when we talk about your why, why you're starting your detailing business, why you wanna start and grow a profitable detailing business, as I told you in those lessons, you will be reflecting back later on why you're starting this and that'll help dictate some of the decisions going forward. And this is one of those decisions that we're talking about. Um, I, you don't want to only love your job when you're on vacation because the, the reason for that is the reason that you're starting this detailing business in the first place is probably because you want some more freedom. 
You want some more time freedom. You want some more income freedom. You want some of these freedoms that your current job doesn't offer. And for me, one of the freedoms I want is schedule freedom and time freedom. So that is not something that a fixed location shop can offer me. Because I know that with my work ethic, if I have a shop and there's work laying around to do, I'm never going to want to leave. So that doesn't work for my why. Okay. So I love my job all the time because I roll up to someone's house for a few hours and I leave. Sometimes I'm there two days. Sometimes I'm not. For the most part, I'm not. So I love my job all the time and I want you to love your job all the time too. So that may mean being mobile. That may mean getting a shop. That may mean being mobile and having a shop at your house. But let's dive into that. So the, I'm not going to try to sway you either way. I'm not going to try to sway you into being a mobile guy I'm not or gal. I'm not going to try to sway you into starting a fixed location shop. There's definitely pros and cons to both. And I just want to lay those out for you and have you take that information and then reflect on your why. Hopefully you're taking notes in Evernote, reflecting back into your Evernote and then making the best decision. So the fixed location shop. So should you go mobile? Should you go fixed? The short answer for most of you is probably to go mobile. Um, But Let's dive into it a little deeper. Can you use an outbuilding at your house? Can you build on a simple building onto your land that would suffice as a fixed location shop? See, what we're doing here is we're looking at the least expensive options first. Maybe you're looking at buying a new house right now and... Maybe there's a house that you can find that has a really good setup. Maybe it's a detached garage in the back. Maybe it's an outhouse. Maybe it's something that you can kind of convert with a little bit of tweaking, you know, into your shop and it's on your land. Um, While I don't have, can you use the garage at your house? See, because what can, what all this can do is significantly reduce your monthly overhead. And as we talked about in a previous lesson, your your capital, your cash, your startup cash, and your working capital is vital to make sure that you are growing a profitable business. And if you're buried in overhead every month, that's going to limit and change your decisions that you make on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, year-to-year basis. So again, the whole purpose of this course is to start and grow a profitable detailing business. And if you're buried in overhead every month, because your shop is, you know, three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars a month, that'll bury you. I've seen it over and over and over and over, not only within the detailing space, but but within other industries of where people get in over their head with their location and they can't even afford the monthly bills. So don't do that. So while I don't have any experience owning a fixed location detail shop, I have extensive experience within my family business and physical locations that, and I've seen brick and mortar businesses go out because business, uh, because the business location wasn't good enough to sustain the word of mouth about the new business took. So a couple examples, my dad started a mail center on a really popular uh, street, had a business there for 16 years, three different businesses within that same location within 16 years. And he still runs a brick and mortar shop that has a better location. So I've gleaned insight and reverse engineered his uh, business dynamic um, to find out what worked, what didn't in his first location versus his new location. Um, another another business uh, friend of mine started a business. His uh, first fixed location was his rent was 2000 bucks a month. He was doing super good there. Then he made all the way the big jump to $10,000 a month. And within a year, he had no business left. So you want to be extremely careful what you're doing if you decide to go the fixed location route. Because at even 2000 bucks a month, that's a lot of detail work that you need to be bringing in. And chances are, if you're going to have a fixed location detail shop, you're going to have employees, which is going to be additional overhead. And you just begin to see how that can add up very, very quickly. If you are going to do a fixed location shop, which I think the benefit to having a fixed location shop is that you can look way more legit than a mobile detailer. 
you can create this atmosphere for your customers that can lead to a higher ticket detail. You can create this vibe, this ambiance in this fixed location shop that, to be frank, mobile detailers just cannot offer. And I try really hard to do that as a mobile detailer. And it, there's just simply limitations in being mobile that you don't have for a fixed location shop. But you want to pick your location carefully. Um, if you can't find the perfect corner location, but you find a building that has a little off street view, but a smack dab in the middle of, of the customers you want to reach, that's still a good spot to open. So, uh, I interviewed Cougar. Uh, he owns Lux auto spa in Utah as a really, really successful shop. Um, and one of his first locations wasn't on the main street. It was actually hidden behind this bigger warehouse, but it was in the exact location, the geographical location that he wanted, uh, that the customers he wanted to target. That's still a good location. And then you can use the tips and tricks that we're going to teach you later in, that I'm going to teach you later in this program through digital marketing and stuff like that where your physical location is becoming less important, but it's still very important for drive-by traffic and, and just visually to see. So you really want to pick your location carefully. Now for me, I'm in Southern California. This is extremely difficult. And again, one of the other reasons why I've never started a fixed location, because I can't find a business or a location that is zoned properly in my desired location. Now I have a very, very niche down specific location to my local town where I think I could kill it with a fixed location business, but there's no openings yet. So if that time were to ever come where that I have about three specific spots that are automotively zoned and that I could open up a little detail shop, if any of those ever opened, you bet I would have a fixed location shop. You bet I would. Be, but again, I'm going to be patient and wait because the overhead can be so significantly high. So the first real <laughs> the first rule of real estate, actually the first three rules of real estate are location, location, location. Having a great location can be the difference between making it and not making it. So, okay. So, but wait, what if I do great work, won't the people just come? That's maybe what you're saying right now. Yes, that's true, but probably not enough to keep your business busy. Um, so uh, what we're going to talk about later is, uh, you know, we're, right now we're talking about physical locations, but also also there's digital locations. So your online location is becoming really, really important as well. So your physical location, but also your online location, your, your digital location is becoming just as valuable and the benefit to your digital location is it helps fixed and mobile guys alike. So, uh, if you're deciding to start the fixed location, I would start small, maybe a thousand square feet and grow as needed. Uh, sign a short term of a lease as possible. You don't want to be on the hook for 10 years. You just don't, uh, cause you might not be there in 10 years. You may want to grow to a bigger spot in 10 years. I would try to sign a year max. Um, take in consideration the look of the building. So you, you are starting up a detail shop. Cleanliness is what people are paying you for. If, if your building looks like crap, the inside of your building looks like crap, that's going to be a direct influence upon the type of work that you can do. Again, you want to be setting up this ambiance for people to come and have an experience at your shop. That's going to help set you apart from your competition. Um, ongoing overhead can destroy your business and bury you quickly. So please, 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 please. I want you to succeed. I want you to start and grow a profitable detailing business. Please, please, please do your research for all this stuff and make sure you have enough capital to keep you going. All right. The mobile setup. Benefits, low startup, lower monthly overhead, and huge marketing advantage by offering the quote-unquote, we come to you, we detail it right in your driveway. Obviously, the overhead is pretty much just your startup cost and your gas and insurance for your car and your rig. So your your monthly overhead is significantly lower 
Um, but if the weather change, if, if your weather, wherever you are geographically changes dramatically during the different seasons, mobile may not be an option. So it's harder to control an environment when you're mobile. It, just the fact of the matter. It's really hard to control that. So, and going back to a previous lesson, again, you see how all these lessons build upon each other. That's why I'm selling it as one whole package or individual lessons if you choose to purchase it that way. But these really all build upon each other because in a previous lesson, we talked about not only your why you're doing this, but what type of detailer you want to be. So, we had to establish what type of detailer you want to be first because that will, as we transition to whether you want to be a mobile or a fixed location shop, will dictate that decision. So I've structured this course, and this is why it took me so long to structure this course and record it and all that, because the decisions that you've made earlier in the course, and if you forgot what those decisions were, you can go back through and go through your Evernote or wherever you're writing and taking notes. You can go back through and see what decisions you made. And maybe once you get to this spot and you're like, oh man, I thought I was going to be a high-end correction and coding guy, so I'd need a fixed location, because you would if you were going to be a correction and coding detailer only, you'd probably want a fixed location so you can control the environment. And then you got to this lesson and you go, oh man, I didn't even think about the overhead. I'm going to be buried because I'm in Southern California. My overhead's going to be two, three, four thousand bucks a month. I, I just don't want to do that. I'm going to go mobile. I got to switch up what kind of detailer I'm going to be. So again, that's a ref uh, looking back and then looking forward, that's why all these lessons are building upon each other um, so you can work through this and really grow a profitable detailing business. Imagine that. So uh, one thing to consider being mobile, if your weather changes dramatically during the different seasons, mobile may not be for you. Uh, mobile setup can be, and I've had all these trucks, trailers, cargo vans, high-end vans, um, but again, I would go small. I what I would start as small as possible, whether you're a fixed location or you're a mobile detailer, start as small as possible because you're starting, your overhead is as little as possible um, and you don't have to worry about it as much. So um, I, I've seen people work out of the back of a VW car before. So, uh, and thanks to these new eco-friendly movement um, where people are, uh, you know, not having to carry around a water tank anymore and uh, a pressure washer and all that. And those methods are becoming effective and efficient. Uh, you can really start out of, out of a really, really small vehicle, which, which is what I do. Going back to high-end vans, the pros and cons, um, and I'm going to include the story about the Sprinter van. So in 2015, 16, 17, yes. In 2015, I decided that I was going to, I was driving around in a really beat up Chevy Express van. I decided I was going to take my detailing business to the next level and I bought a Sprinter van, black Sprinter van. Very uh, nice high-end van. Now the problem, it, it backfired on me. It, it, and a lot of people ask me now, oh, why don't you have the Sprinter anymore? It completely backfired on me. And I think most of it had to do with the fact that it was black and that it was, it was such a big van. I think even a, a different decision in getting a white van would have made a whole different outcome. Um, but um, it, it, the van completely backfired on me. So be careful of this. It was too much and made too much of a statement. And people thought I was either doing too well or I was going to charge them way too much to detail their car. So that's why I got rid of it. And then I went back to a truck and it's been totally fine. Uh, no one says anything. So be vigilant of that. You don't want to have a setup that is too fancy I guess the Sprinter had a big fat Mercedes logo on the front um, like I said it was a huge van it was black it made a really really big statement which is what I was going for but it made too much of a statement and actually started to backfire on me so I was trying to create that ambiance for the customer at their location ambiance that you would be able to do if you had a fixed location shop and you could be really nice and really high-end but 
what happened was it was too over the top and honestly customers didn't like it they just flat out didn't like it so i had to get rid of that van as soon as possible now like i said if that same van would have been white in color instead of black i think it would have made a different impression um so that's something that i go back and forth with um from time to time but something definitely to consider so if you can, the the best of both worlds that I would suggest is that if you could uh, be mobile most of the time and then have a shop at your house or utilize your garage, I feel like that would be the best of both worlds that you could do mobile and fixed location. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed those two little segments. Number five, and number seven, training and fixed location or mobile. Again, that is just a little tiny, teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny sample of uh, stuff that you are going to be delivered in the detailer inner circle. In fact, those things that you just listened to aren't actually even in the inner circle yet. So if you enjoyed that, there's 10 times, 100 times more information on how to market and grow your detailing business as well as a boxer group full, chock full of other detailers that you can literally talk to every single day and get instant feedback. And it's quality feedback. It's not the feedback that you get in some of these uh, Facebook groups and stuff like that. It's actually quality feedback. So I hope you at least consider the Detailer Inner Circle. Again, we have a whole one hour uh, video webinar that you can check out at detailerinnercircle.com. But if you don't feel like watching that and you'd rather just write in to me and ask a few questions, I'd be more than happy to uh, answer any questions you may have you can just hit me up on facebook uh, facebook.com slash auto detailing podcast all right talk soon